Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. And if you missed my most recent video, which was part one of this second video, definitely go and check that out because this video will make a lot more sense. But basically just to quickly recap, we took a fairly typical gaming PC uh, in the S340 Elite, and then we transferred as much of the components as we could into the tiny fractal design node 202. And today we're going to look at what the performance penalty is in terms of temperatures, uh, noise, and of course, overclocking as well, since moving to the smaller system. And just a quick disclaimer, I still think that an ATX mid tower case is going to be the best option for most people in terms of uh, component compatibility and cooling as well. But seeing as mini ITX cases are getting a lot more popular, uh, I think this will be an interesting comparison and let's see what we're working with with the Node 202. Something that we will be changing slightly though is that CPU cooler and if you watched part one you would have seen that the Wraith Spire was a little bit too tall for the Node 202 and for the other two low profile coolers that I did have on hand I didn't have the AM4 mounting kit and so I couldn't use those either. Instead I fitted the Wraith Stealth cooler which is the stock cooler for the Ryzen 3 processors and I just hoped for the best here but a few of you in the comment section let me know of a little mod for the Wraith Spire which involves swapping the stock cooler master fan with the fan from the c7 and although i had seen this mod before i didn't know that it would actually allow the wraith spire to fit in the node 202 but sure enough swapping the fans does significantly reduce the height of the wraith spire cooler where it can now fit into the node 202 and i'll drop a link to the mod tutorial that i used in the description below if you want to do the same Basically, all I needed to do was remove the stock fan from the heatsink, drill through the plastic on the C7 fan where the screws align, and then screw it down onto the heatsink nice and easy. Okay, now that that's done, let's get right into the testing and see how the two systems stack up both in terms of noise and thermals. Let's start off with the easy stuff and look at how both systems performed at idle. And with the same fan profiles, they are sitting roughly the same, with GPU temperatures on the Node 202 being a couple degrees better, most likely due to those two 120mm intake fans, but the CPU temps ended up being a couple degrees warmer. So nothing too significant here in my opinion, but it does give us some insight on how the two systems systems will perform in the next few tests. Next, let's take a look at how that Ryzen 5 1600 handled the Prime 95 stress test in both systems. Here we're running the stress test for 15 minutes, at which point you can see both systems start to level out after around the eight minute mark. The results that you see in the middle are the average of the last three minutes and the ATX mid tower is beating the Node 202 here, but only by about four and a half degrees. Note that the S340 Elite also has two case fans positioned right next to the CPU cooler configured as exhaust, so there's no doubt that that's why we're seeing a superior result. Next, let's look at GPU temperatures, and in Heaven 4.0, the results really impressed me, and this is where the Node 202 really proves itself as a solid enclosure for a gaming-focused build. The GTX 1060 was sitting at 1860 MHz for both systems, and the difference here was under 1 degree Celsius, which is pretty neat. I definitely don't think that one degree is too significant. For example, it's not going to net you a significantly higher overclock, frame rate, or anything of that nature. So really happy with the result here. Now, before we talk about overclocking, I quickly want to do a noise test comparison between the two systems to give you guys an idea uh, on how loud each system is. Now, we are testing both Prime95 and Heaven 4.0 here. So both a CPU stress test and a GPU stress test, both at full load. And I did notice here that in the CPU stress test that the Node 202 was a quite a bit louder. So the Node 202 has the ventilated side panels. As you can see, we've got lots of cutouts and that allows for a lot of airflow, but it also allows for lots of noise to transfer as well. Whereas the S340 Elite is pretty insulated. We've got a tempered glass side panel and there's not much ventilation going on there. So let me know what you guys think of this sound test. So I think we can all agree that the CPU stress test, uh, the Node 202 was quite a bit louder, but for gaming, uh, our GPU stress test showed that uh, both systems are pretty similar.
All right, now let's talk about overclocking. And as we are stepping down the phase count for the VRMs, I did expect the mini ITX machine to do quite a bit worse here. And while that was the case, it wasn't really anything significant. And so here I wanted to see what the highest clock speed I could achieve on each board was running at 1.35 volts. And in the end, the ATX board was running 50 megahertz faster than the ITX board at 3.95 gigahertz. I did boot at four gigahertz and even passed a few tests, but it did crash eventually whereas the ITX board did not budge above 3.9. So in terms of clock speed, this is a closer gap than I had imagined. And here are the temperatures in Prime 95 with both systems running the same settings just to balance things out. And here we can see a significant difference in those load temperatures. Here the Ryzen 5 processor in the ITX system was getting nice and toasty at 90.3 degrees C, whereas the ATX system does manage things significantly better and is really accommodating that overclock with load temperatures sitting at 80.8 degrees C. So a pretty massive difference here and definitely a heads up for those who are planning to downsize their system, but also run an overclocked CPU through intensive programs at the same time. It's not really recommended with a low profile cooler. For those users, I would definitely recommend getting a wider ITX case like the NCase M1, Silverstone SG13 or Cougar QBX, which can all facilitate some very powerful CPU coolers and handle these overclocks no problem at all. For slim cases though, significant overclocking and and stressful scenarios are just not going to work that well at all. Next, I wanted to run a couple tests on the Node 202 specifically to get an idea on what the optimal configuration was and what the temperature penalty would be when I was moving things around. So for example, I wanted to see what the GPU temps would be with the Node 202 laying flat with the GPU facing downwards. And to no surprise, there's a significant increase in temperature by almost 10 degrees C. So if you are going to be running the Node 202 in a flat orientation, make sure you position the GPU facing upwards. And a couple of you have asked about those intake fans underneath the graphics card and were a little bit skeptical on how effective they were going to be. But here we can see a pretty significant decrease in temperatures with them installed. So after all, they are providing your graphics card with some fresh air. And with a difference of about seven degrees C, that's definitely more than enough to see a difference in GPU boost clock and also your overclocking headroom. So if you do have the room for those fans there, it's highly recommended that you do use them. And so summarizing the data, we didn't see a significant increase in GPU temperatures when comparing the ATX mid tower system and the ITX system in the node 202. So if you were going to make the downsizing transition solely for gaming, I'd say you're definitely good to go and you're not going to suffer a significant performance drop at all when moving to your new case, provided it has similar airflow to the node 202. However, for those intense CPU sessions, the ITX system was inferior to the ATX mid tower as all Although we were essentially able to reach the same overclock, we did see about a 10 degree difference in the ATX mid tower's favor. This means that if you do a lot of CPU intensive workloads like video editing, it's a good idea to consider how much CPU cooling and overclocking you really need before moving to your new small form factor PC. If it's a deal breaker for you, I definitely recommend going with a couple of the wider cases that I mentioned earlier since they can fit taller coolers and they will be able to accommodate a high TDP processor underneath those. The sound tests speak for themselves and since the Node 202 does have cutouts all around, it does allow for sound to travel outside of the case and be a little bit more audible, but honestly, it's nothing significant. And if you wear headphones while you're using your system, I doubt you'll notice any difference at all. And so in the end, we are getting a significantly smaller system that you can pretty much take anywhere you want, or maybe just give you a lot more room on your desk thanks to that smaller footprint. Uh, CPU temperatures were a little bit alarming. Uh, so if you're running a very high TDP processor, maybe running a low profile CPU cooler is not the best option. Gaming performance though was really solid and we only saw an increase of about one degree. So gaming performance is pretty much gonna be unaffected. In terms of component compatibility, yeah, we did have to swap out more components than I would have liked. Three and a half inch hard drive is a no-go in this case since it's really slim and same situation with the CPU cooler. We are limited to 56 millimeters. Definitely consider the wider options that I've mentioned throughout this review though. The Cougar QBX is a really solid option for $50. And so guys, let me know what you think of this little transition. Uh, are you planning on transitioning to mini ITX? Maybe you already have the Node 202. If you do, let me know what system you're running inside it uh, because I'd really love to know, especially that CPU cooler. Uh, how do you guys get around the high thermals and stuff like that? 
Let me know in the description below. And as always, guys, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.